We are now on to section 2.2, where we will discuss different types of graphs. In the previous section, histograms provide a useful visual display of the distribution of data. However, the data must be quantitative. In this section, we examine other types of graphs, some of which are suitable for qualitative or category data as well. Let's start with bar graphs. These are graphs that can be used to display quantitative or qualitative data. The features of a bar graph are as follows. First, bars can be vertical or horizontal. Second, bars are of uniform width and uniformly spaced. Third, the length of the bars represent values of the variable being displayed, the frequency of occurrence or the percentage of occurrence. The same measurement scale is used for the length of each bar. Fourth, the graph is well annotated with title, labels for each bar, and vertical scale or actual value for the length of each bar. It is important to note how bar graphs are different from histograms. First, bar graphs focus on categories of quantitative or qualitative data. Histograms only use quantitative data in number ranges. Another minor detail is that bar graphs have gaps between the bars, and histograms do not allow gaps between the bars. A Pareto chart is a bar graph in which the bar height represents frequency of an event. In addition, the bars are arranged from left to right according to decreasing height. Here is an example of a Pareto chart that looks at customer complaints. Notice how the bars are arranged from left to right according to decreasing height. In this example, the biggest customer complaint is parking difficulty and then rude sales representative. The Pareto chart can help us visually determine where the biggest problems lie and where to focus our efforts. In a circle graph or pie chart, Wedges of a circle visually display proportional parts of the total population that share a common characteristic. It is relatively safe from misinterpretation and is especially useful for showing the division of a total quantity into its component parts. This circle graph example shows the favorite type of movie. We can easily see that 30% of individuals surveyed chose romance and 5% chose drama. The total quantity, or 100%, is represented by the entire circle. Each wedge of the circle represents a component part of the total. Time series data consists of measurements of the same variable for the same subject taken at regular intervals over a period of time. In a time series graph, data are plotted in order of occurrence at regular intervals over a period of time. This example shows a time series graph for timber production we can see that the production in general increases over time. To make a time series graph, we put time on the horizontal scale and the variable being measured on the vertical scale. In a basic time series graph, we connect the data points by line segments. Time series are often used in economics, finance, sociology, medicine, and any other situation in which we want to study or monitor a similar measure over a period of time. A time series graph can reveal some of the main features of a time series. Here is an example for a time series graph. Suppose you have been in the walking slash jogging exercise program for 20 weeks. And for each week, you have recorded the distance you covered in 30 minutes. 
Your data log is shown below. Make a time series graph. First of all, the data are appropriate for a time series graph because they represent the same measurement, the distance covered in a 30-minute period, taken at different times. The measurements are also recorded at equal time intervals every week. There are three steps to making a time series graph. Step one is to list the time or weeks in order on the horizontal scale. In step two, above each week, we plot the distance on the vertical scale. In step three, we connect the dots and label the axis. And here is the finalized graph. The horizontal axis shows the week. The vertical axis shows the distance obtained each week. What about interpretation? Can you detect any patterns? There are two important things to note. First, there seems to be an upward trend in distance covered. The distances covered in the last few weeks are about a mile farther than those for the first few weeks. Second, however, we cannot conclude that this trend will continue. Perhaps you have reached your goal for this training activity and now wish to maintain a distance of about 2.5 miles in 30 minutes. Take a look at two, the two bar graphs below. Do you notice any differences? There's a few things to note. First, the height of each bar represents the life expectancy in years. The graphs are called clustered bar graphs because there are two bars for each year of birth. One bar represents the life expectancy for men, and the other represents the life expectancy for women. An important feature illustrated on the right is that of a changing scale. Notice that the scale between 0 and 65 is compressed. The changing scale amplifies the apparent difference between life expectancies for men and women as well as the increase in life expectancies from those born in 1980 to the projected span of those born in 2010. As for the changing scale, whenever you use a change in scale in a graphic, warn the viewer by using a squiggle on the changed axis. Sometimes if a single bar is unusually long, the bar length is compressed with a squiggle in the bar itself. Here is another example of a scale change on a graph for home prices. Notice that the graph on the left starts at 80,000 and the graph on the right starts at zero. The scale change makes the left graph look much more dramatic than the right graph for the same pieces of information. Here is a misleading bar graph example, which focuses on improper scaling. In the graph on the left, item B is increased both vertically and horizontally, making it appear bigger than the regular B. Here is another example of a misleading graph. In the graph on the left, Item C appears to be at least as large as item A, whereas in actuality, it is less than half as large. Here are a summary of the graphs and procedures we have covered in this section. Bar graphs are useful for quantitative or qualitative data. With qualitative data, the frequency or percentage of occurrence can be displayed. With quantitative data, the measurement itself can be displayed, as was done in Figure 211. Watch that the measurement scale is consistent or that a jump scale squiggle is used. 
Pareto charts identify the frequency of events or categories in decreasing order of frequency of occurrence. Circle graphs display how a total is dispersed into several categories. The circle graph is very appropriate for qualitative data or any data for which percentage of occurrence makes sense. Circle graphs are most effective when the number of categories or wedges is 10 or fewer. Time series graphs display how data change over time. It is best if the units of time are consistent in a given graph. For instance, measurements taken every day should not be mixed on the same graph with data taken every week. For any graph, it is important to provide a title, label the axes, and identify units of measure. As Edward Tuff suggests in his book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, don't let artwork or skewed perspective cloud the clarity of the information displayed.